Ciao a tutti, benvenuti o bentornati al mio podcast Learn Italian for Travel. Sono Danielle. Come state oggi? Spero tutto bene. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my podcast Learn Italian for Travel. I am Danielle. How are you all doing today? Hope you're all doing well. This podcast today is going to be a more beginning level, whereas the podcasts I've done in the past have been more intermediate level. So I'm going to mostly be introducing vocabulary in order to teach you some phrases that you can use to wish somebody well. So this is going to be all about positive things that you can say to express blessings, well wishes, saying have a great whatever, congratulations, compliments, good luck, all of those great things that we want to say to people. Some idiomatic phrases are included in this and some are translate literally. So I'll tell a story at the very end. I don't have the transcript written out because the story is so short and I'll just summarize it in English afterwards. But you can find all of this written vocabulary in my website under the blog section. The website is learnitalianfortravel.com. So just look for the title of the podcast, which is Wishing Someone Well, and you'll find everything written down there for those of you that like to see grammar written down. So as always, I recommend after I say the word, repeating it a couple of times. It's super important as you're learning a language to say the word yourself. If you don't say it, it's going to be always a, a foreign word that sounds weird coming out of your own mouth. It's really important to be okay with making mistakes when you're learning a language. Know that those mistakes are important and sometimes you're going to sound kind of funny or maybe it's not 100% grammatically correct, but that's okay because with time you'll get it, but you got to just keep practicing. When I was a student in Italy doing my study abroad program in 1996, 1997, many years ago, one of the things that stood out to me was all of the kind things that my roommate said, the well-wishing that they would express to me and to one another. I remember them always, everything I was about to do, they would use a form of buono in front of the noun and then wish me well in that thing. So, per esempio, and this is not just my roommates in this context, um, all Italians, if you're ever eating in Italy and they walk by, they will say buon appetito, buon appetito. And that means have a good appetite, enjoy your food, enjoy your meal. It's very important to Italians that you enjoy your food. I mean, why else would you eat, right? So you'll hear that all the time. But my roommates that during that year, like I said, everything that I was about to do, they would say, per esempio, buona doccia, have a good shower, if I was about to go take a shower. Buona passeggiata, have a good walk, if I was about to go walk. Buono studio, have a good study session, enjoy your studies. So buono is an adjective, it means good, um, and there are masculine and feminine and plural forms that have to do with the noun that it's modifying. All of the nouns that I'll teach you today are going to be singular um, and depending what it starts with you'll use a form of buono, buona, buon, any of those but not we're not doing any plurals in this section. I'll say the word twice and repeat it after me so I already said buon appetito. If you want to say to somebody, have a good day, you would say buona giornata. Buona giornata. And then if you want to say, have a good evening, buona serata. Buona serata. So those are both sli slightly different than buongiorno and buona sera. When you say buongiorno, you're saying hello in the morning or in the daytime or goodbye. Same with buona sera, could be hello or goodbye in the evening. When you use buona in front of both of those terms with the atta ending, it changes into more of a command, have a good day. If you want to say to somebody, have fun, you can say buon divertimento. It's a very satisfying word to say. Buon divertimento. You can also use the reflexive verb divertirsi, which means to enjoy oneself and command somebody with that. 
in the command form, you would attach the reflexive pronoun to the end of the conjugated verb. So if you say to one person, have fun, in the singular form, you would say, divertiti. And if you say to a group of people to have fun, you would say, divertitevi. Divertitevi. The phrase for happy birthday is buon compleanno. Buon compleanno. Have a good birthday. Happy birthday. But the happy birthday song is another phrase with the term auguri, tanti auguri. And I will talk about auguri in a little bit. So just know that that's coming. Um, and usually people on your birthday, they will wish you blessings with auguri, not with buon compleanno. If you want to say Merry Christmas, buon Natale, buon Natale. And Christmas just passed, so the next big holiday coming up would be Easter. So buona Pasqua, buona Pasqua. Happy Easter. The new year just passed too, but the expression for that that you can use next year is buon anno. Buon anno. You could also say buon anno nuovo. Buon anno nuovo. With the nuovo meaning new, happy new year. So there are many more things that you can say with buono. I'm going to stop there, um, but just know that if you want to wish somebody well, you just take the noun and you modify buono in accordance with that noun. In English, we say good luck a lot. And the phrase good luck in Italian is buona fortuna. But it's considered a bit of bad luck if you say good luck with that term, buona fortuna. So I want to talk about the phrase that you do use in Italian instead of saying buona fortuna. You would say, in bocca a lupo. In bocca a lupo. In English, we have the term break a leg because it's considered bad luck before a performance to say good luck. So we have the same sort of thing. In Italian, in bocca a lupo means literally in the mouth of the wolf. And so the correct response to that phrase is crepi il lupo. Crepi il lupo. And that means may the wolf die. So it sounds a little morbid and a little intense, but if you consider the wolf is not a, a real animal, but the wolf is a thing that you're sort of afraid of. That's what is inducing this captivating feeling before your performance. The wolf dying is meaning that you surpassed that fear and that you did well and that you had success. Although some people might just say grazie, which we know is thank you. And if somebody says grazie, I feel like they understand that the response would be may the wolf die, crepi il lupo. But as you know, or might not know, wolves also, mama wolves carry their young in their mouths. And so if you're in the mouth of the wolf, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe the wolf is actually protecting you and carrying you to a safer spot and supporting you. So then you would consider that a, a positive con connotation being in the mouth of the wolf, not a fearful situation. And so grazie there would be appropriate. Okay, andiamo avanti. If somebody does a good job, you can say simply bravo. And bravo is like buono is an adjective. So it's going to be modified in accordance to the person that you're saying it to. So bravo would be the masculine singular ending that you would say to a guy. Brava to a girl. Bravi to a group of people, um, either girls and guys or all guys. And then brave to a group of all girls. And you might have heard this at performances. When somebody finishes, people might stand up, bravo, bravo. It's a positive way to say good job but it means that somebody did well. So that's why you would say it based on how they performed, bravo. Buono actually has to do more with inherent qualities of goodness, um, just so you know that distinction. 
I do have a video on YouTube that talks about buono and bravo and the adjective bello and when to use each of those in different situations because they are all different. La prossima parola, the next word, if you want to say congratulations to somebody when they've achieved a goal or uh, are deserving some recognition for something that they've done, the word is similar, it's a cognate, similar to the word in English, you can say congratulazioni, congratulazioni. And then if you want to give somebody compliments, this is another cognate, you can say complimenti, complimenti. And you would say this, not necessarily when somebody has achieved a goal or deserves recognition, but just if you want to express admiration for someone for any reason, maybe you like their outfit or maybe you like something that they've done but it, it's a little bit different in that way and the story that I'm going to tell is actually about that word complimenti which I will tell after I introduce all of these words. The next word I've already mentioned is auguri. Auguri. So the translation is blessings or best wishes and like I said it's used in communicating happy birthday. In Italian the happy birthday song doesn't use buon compleanno, it uses tanti auguri. So you would sing tanti auguri a te, tanti auguri a te. And you all know the rest of the song and I'm not a great singer, so I won't sing the whole thing, but just know that that is used often on birthdays. So you can also modify auguri by saying auguroni, auguroni. And that means the same thing, lots of blessings. If you see one on the end of a noun, it means more of that thing. If you see isimo on the end of an adjective or an adverb, it means more of that thing. So if you said bravissimo at the end of a performance, you would be saying that that person did really, really well. An excellent job where bravo is more like great job. Va bene. La prossima frase, the next phrase, if you want to say take care to someone, it's a command. And in the informal form, it would be stami bene. Stami bene. If you want to say to a group of people, take care, you would just change it into the plural form and you would say state mi bene. State mi bene. In an informal interaction, you can end like a text message or um, some kind of message online or a conversation with kisses and hugs, just like we do in English. So the word for kisses is baci, baci, and the word for hugs is abracci, abracci. I like to say un abraccio, un abraccio, a hug, or even, this is kind of fun, you can say un abraccione, un abraccione. I actually learned this from my Italian boyfriend's mother when I was doing my study abroad that year. She always used to say that, a big hug. And so she modified abraccio with that one ending just like I talked about earlier with auguri, auguroni, un abbraccione. So I love that. Poi la prossima frase. So if you can remember back to COVID, the COVID pandemic when it was first happening, Italians in Italy rallied tremendously. And on the news, I remember feeling very uplifted by their messages of hope and resilience to the rest of the world. I remember seeing videos of Italians singing songs from their patios and then joining with other neighbors from their respective patios and just doing what they could to keep their spirits up. The rules about leaving the house were way more strict in Italy than they were in the US. I remember we could walk to the park and do whatever we wanted, but Italians could not walk a certain distance away from their houses even. So their spirits were very strong. They did all these um, positive things for the rest of the world to see. 
I don't know if you remember the phrase that they invented as sort of the theme of hope for this time, and it was andrà tutto bene. Andrà tutto bene. So you can say that to somebody, everything will be all right. And you can also say, I hope that everything goes well for somebody. And that phrase is, spero che tutto vada bene. Spero che tutto vada bene. Finally, if you want to say to somebody, have strength, you can see that they need some support or help. You can say, forza. Forza, which is the noun for strength, but it is used to convey kind of, I believe in you, um, have, have strength during this time. Va bene, quello è tutto il vocabulario. So that is all the vocabulary that I wanted to talk about for these well wishes that you can convey to people. And the little story that I wanted to tell you, I said earlier, was about the word complimenti. Adesso vi dico la storia in italiano. Allora, sono stata a Venezia e stavo camminando dalla stazione e davanti a me c'era una donna molto bella e lei si vestiva in un vestito lungo e nero con le scarpe col tacco e lei era molto elegante, molto molto bella. E allora c'era un gruppo di tre uomini che erano a piedi mentre lei camminava, loro stavano parlando qualcosa e mentre lei passava un uomo ha detto a lei complimenti alla mamma e ho, ho sorriso perché è stato carino e non offensivo questo complimento. So what I said, if you didn't understand, was that there were of a few men standing on the side of the road while this woman walked by. She had a long dress on, black dress on, and high heel shoes, and she was very, very beautiful. And what they said to her when she walked by was, compliments to your mom. <laughs> and I thought that that was very sweet. So I'm a mom myself, but it's not just because I'm a mom. I wasn't a mom at the time. I just thought it was a, it was a great way to give a compliment. Like, great genes, tell your mom she did a good job, something like that. So, Allora, grazie mille per la vostra attenzione oggi. I hope that these words help you. And I hope that you're able to wish each other well in many ways. And when you get to Italy, you'll understand these phrases and you'll be able to communicate them back to people. Alla prossima! Grazie! Ciao!